All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Bellied Up Podcast. I'm here, Miles. You betcha guy here with Charlie Barons. Barons, how you feeling? How's that shoulder, by the way? Oh, you know. <sighs> How long? Did, uh, so for those who don't know, it after. Yeah. You know? For those that don't know, Charlie Barron threw out the first pitch at a Milwaukee Brewers game. He sure did. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I You got a little more juice than I thought you see, had. Yeah. See, I, you know, I had more juice than I thought I had, too. <laughs> Was the adrenaline pumping? Or there what? was some. Honestly, I kind of blacked out on actually thinking and like before I knew it, the pitch was over. You know, I remember yeah. walking up at the pitch was over. It was almost like um an out of body uh, experience where one you, a yeah. spirit, almost an angel uh, came in and helped me yeah. get the ball over the plate. And then everyone in the crowd stood up and they started flapping their arms like this like they had wings too exactly huh and ironically uh the brewers were playing the angels in that game there we this is like a plot to a movie it, we should it, write a movie about we should this. do it we should do it and we should call it brewers in the outfield well maybe uh angels on the mound well i guess it is brewers yeah we'll workshop it we'll, we'll workshop it, it. that yeah. sounds good but um yeah no i uh i was surprised i was uh, just a bit outside to quote the great uh, Bob Euchre. Yeah. But um, I mean, I wasn't going to bring that up, but since you did, yeah, yeah you, you missed. I would have hit, I would have hit some kneecaps for a left handed batter. Yeah. Uh, but at sure. least you got it to the plate. Oh, there's yeah. A, there's a lot of people who get in your shoes and they just don't get it there. And every single person in the moments leading up, the days leading up, the week leading up. Yep. The hours was saying, don't put it in the dirt. Yeah, it's better to not go in, better to go wild. OK. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I was kind of thinking about that. And so I think what you saw was my attempt to go wild. Yeah. And what happened is it went close to over the plate. He caught it, though, didn't he? He caught it. Yeah. yeah. Then you're good. He, he almost had to pull a muscle to catch it, which would have been bad because that's our left fielder. Yeah. Well, speaking of pulling a muscle, did they at least let you warm up a little bit or no? No. No, they have you going cold. The day before, I went with my brother and Bill Doucette. We went over to the park and threw some balls. <laughs> I was throwing at my brother, yep. you know, and um, I hurt his hand. Okay, um, so, not to you know, only because he caught it in the palm, you know, when you catch it in the palm, yeah, just it hurts. straight yeah, on the he's palm like, hurts so bad. <laughs> Why don't they put um, more padding on the palm? I don't because you're not supposed to catch it there, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why. But no, I, I was really did happy you, with uh, it. did you just to get a gauge of what kind of heat you'd be throwing? Did you happen to go out on maybe like a gravel road or uh you know construction road area construction zone and find one of those speed things on the side uh, and then awesome. wind up and pitch it pitch it toward a police checkpoint kind yeah of. I, if i ever do that which i plan on doing at some point in my life it's on my bucket yeah. list to do yeah. that uh, no like the construction like slow down signs <laughs> you know do those actually could those measure a baseball i don't know but i because of the one movie where he does that, and it says 72 on there. He oh. thinks he lost his fastball, and then as he's walking back, it blinks, and the nine comes into play. What was that movie? What was that movie? Rook the Rookie, maybe? Rookie of the Year? No. Rookie of the Year is oh, the, the kid. Rookie. Oh, The Rookie. Yeah, it's with Dennis Quaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, So I always make sure that if I'm going to throw a pitch past that, I give it a good full five minutes just in case a nine flashes. <laughs> Instead of just the 72. Do you think um, it, now for me, it's easy because Milwaukee where, you know, we got the Brewers mm -hmm. Fargo. Um, what, what do you guys got going cooking baseball wise? Well, I'm probably going to have to take a road trip. To yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Twins game. Either a twins game. Maybe go, make, maybe down to STL for a Ooh. for a pitch. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to Chicago, though. I can tell you Thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I was getting. No, to. it's going to be either that. MSP or STL. Just that, short for Minneapolis, St. Paul, and St. Louis. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Is that? Were you a, a fan of any particular baseball team growing up? Uh, you know, we watched the Twins. My, my okay. dad's family is pretty big Twins fans. I just never watched baseball. I liked playing it more than I liked watching it. Were you good? I pitched. I was a pitcher. Oh, wow. Uh, but I quit in like ninth grade because I couldn't hit anything. Okay. And they wouldn't let me play catcher when I wasn't pitching. Okay. I'm left handed. 
So I don't know what the people gatekeeping who can catch based off of what hand you throw with is kind of bullshit, honestly. Yeah. And that's a hill I'll die on. Yeah, and honest, I, I think it's, um, you know, I was a catcher. Not to rub it in, but no, I was a yeah, catcher. Thanks. I'd, yeah. lo- I'd love to. I'd love to put the gear on, get behind the plate. See, I'm a physical contact guy. That's why I like football. So if I could get in the dirt and have balls bouncing off my chest, that just was very appealing to me. I think yeah. I would have been a good goalie as well in hockey, but or I would have been a great scorer. So either way, but you no, I had to play basketball where you you know you get tick tacky f- fouls all the time. But this is enough about me. Let's go back to the pitch. No, I'd like to talk more about your uh, athletic prowess. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> your whole family You're was good, there. by the way. Thank you. You've really been working. Your out. whole family was at the pitch. Yeah. I saw. Yeah, my whole family. Grandma Did, was there. Here's the thing. So I know what my family would do if I pitched it and I missed left. Yeah. What would What did they say to you afterwards? Was it all Charlie? That was so awesome. Oh or hell no. No, was I it was like roasted immediately? Yeah, yep. Absolutely immediately. Everyone was ah, just a bit outside. <laughs> <laughs> I got texts from my uncles being like, don't quit your day job, you <laughs> bastard. Um, yeah. It, and a lot of. Uh, yeah, that's why you couldn't make the JV team in high school. Yeah, stuff yeah, like I, that. yeah, yeah. So why I didn't, didn't even go out for it. I, I my baseball career ended in about seventh grade. Um, I just honestly, I was a good batter. And then uh, I got hit one too. I would always take the hit, I'd take the hit and walk. And then one time I got hit too hard and I just I couldn't I couldn't sit in the box. I became a scaredy cat yeah. after getting that hit. Yeah. Baseball yips, really. Well, it Mental was. Game, I you know? literally couldn't stand it because I always just I pride myself on taking the ball and walking. And then I think I got hit in the head or something. And then I was it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt until that point. Yeah. It, once the kids actually could throw, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, that's what hard. I, that's why I quit baseball as soon as the ball started curving. You know? It's like now I already have a tough enough time when it's going straight, yeah. judging the speed, you know, change up fastball. And now you're telling me it's going to look like it's going to hit me in the face, but then it's going to curve and be a strike. I'm out. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That's terrifying. But I'm yeah. I'm glad that you got to do that. That looked Thanks, like it was man. fun. Would have been fun to be invited with the rest of your family. Oh. Um. What well, you know what <laughs> I I even said I even said uh, let's shoot the bellied up uh, podcast in Milwaukee. Um, and then we I, almost and did. Then I, I had a wedding. I had a wedding in here in Minneapolis. And so. then I would have put the pieces together to invite you uh, to the game. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to steal the show from you. So I'm that's glad true. That if I you would have yeah. showed up, then yeah, and then I would have chugged a beer on the jumbotron. Everyone would have forgot about Barons' ball one. We almost went to a Brewers game once, Miles. You and me. Yeah, I got sick. Yeah, found out he had COVID <laughs> in my living room after spending. Two out, two podcasts. You know what it felt like? And two sketches just sneezing on me. He was sick as hell. I was like, are you okay? Do you have COVID? He's like, no, I'm <laughs> fine. Everyone's just been so, you know? You know what it felt like? Once what? once we found out that I had gotten COVID, it felt like um, <laughs> the next morning after a one night stand, you know, <laughs> where you're like, ha. Ah. well, that was, uh, that was fun, but I, I got to go now. Um, <laughs> You know, what was your name again? You know, it's like, well, it was kind of that type yeah. of energy, wasn't it? And then it? you're like, I should really go get tested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that being yeah. said, why don't we take some callers, That sounds Charlie. good. Let's do it. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Hello there. Uh, it's Andrew. Hey, Andrew. How are you? Give me my mom. This is sick. What what are you up to? All right, yeah, you hear me? Yep. What were you doing? Uh, I'm just at home. Uh, watching TV actually. No, the weather's shit, so can't do much outside. Yeah. What what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in the TV. You work Works in the TV. In so TV. Filming and stuff. How do you get inside that TV's, TV? Uh, filming filming television. I don't know what's inside, but I just know how to use it. Uh, so, like, you're a, you're a producer, you're a audio technician. What do you do? I do uh, camera work and uh, lighting. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty fun. What yeah. do you think about the writer's strike? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of causing some problems for us. Is that why you're We're sitting at home on a Monday? 
Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's been a few Mondays, a few Tuesdays as well. Okay. Wow. Where Where are you but, living? Where are you calling in from? I am outside of Chicago, the suburbs. Ah, okay. Which one? I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, East Dundee. East Dundee. Which street? <laughs> Did you just burp, Miles? I'm along the Fox River. Oh, you're along the Fox River? Yeah. Nice. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar with us since you don't got anything else going on and uh, tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, let me go grab a beer. Yeah, get, get <laughs> yourself a beer. A beer you there know? we go. Yeah, we got one, too. <laughs> yeah, lime too. Oh, the Lineys. What do you got there? Lineys uh, Original Light Summer Shandy. This is a, ju- it's a juicy peach. It's the wife's beer. Oh, juicy peach. That's nice. It's, it's the wife's good. beer. It's the wife's beer. It's the uh, wife's beer? Wife's beer. Yeah. Hey, they're good. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy it. Yeah. But, you know, hey, yeah. People are judging me. I'm no, no one's no, judging no, no, you. No. We're just thinking of a peach emoji right now. All right. What's on your mind <laughs> now that you right, are so, currently uh, got something to wet the whistle? What do you got? So I bought a boat recently. Been going out. Congratulations. That's a big, that is a big freaking day. There's Good for you. The three best days in a man's life. Day he gets married, the day he has his children, and then when he buys a boat. And then the day he sells the boat. Now, how? Uh, what kind of boat? Did you get a speedboat? Did you get a uh, pontoon? What would you get? Give us a lay of the land. Still a 18-foot bass boat. Yeah. Nice. How many horse on that, cool on that engine? Gold, but she runs. How many horsepower? Mercury 150. Merc 150. 150. That'll, that'll get the job done. Wow. That's got some ponies, as they'd yeah. say in the oh, yeah. car community. That's a that's a so, nice piece of equipment. Along with that, yeah. Yeah. Along with it that, what? burns a lot of gasoline. Burns a lot of gas. Yeah, 150 well, horse. Engine. Yep. Yeah. So I'm fine paying for the gasoline, but how do I nicely tell my buddies that when they come, they have to bring the beer and the ice and the sandwiches. Okay. I'll pay for the gas, but I can't be paying for all the beer. That's their job. Okay, well, this is easy. You just start, you bark orders, right? You're in a group chat with them. And if you make it a group thing, right, then no one thinks anything of it, right? If me, you, and Charlie were in a group I mean, chat I, and I had the gas in the boat, I go, Charlie, you're on sandwich duty. You're on beer okay. duty. I'll bring a cooler. All you need to do is bring the beer and the ice. I'll bring the cooler. I'll bring that. It'll be fun. We'll go out on the lake. Ba 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 ba. Boom. That doesn't sound like oh he's making me do all this stuff. It's more of uh we're doing this together, yeah. kind of pot luck style. Yeah, I like that a lot. I I now if you did do that with them, would they uh what would they say? I mean, I think they'd say, like, yeah, sure. Oh, but yeah, then, those like, kind of friends. They, house, like, they only bring, like, a six-pack. Like, they don't bring enough of the beer. Enough. Like, they'll, they'll show up with some beer, but, like, Well, that's because you're drinking that expensive line in Kugels, you know? You got to <laughs> go with something a little more affordable. Oh, I see how it is, Miles. I oh, see what you- Miles is over here taking shots. Okay. Um. <laughs> There's quite a few bush cans on the boat. Okay. So are your friends are your friends broke or are they cheap? Um, I say cheap. Yeah, they're cheap. Okay, so they have some money. They just don't want to spend it on communal activities. Exactly. And are you afraid if you make them spend the money that they won't come out? No, I'm not worried about telling them. I'm just like, what's the correct Midwestern way to do it without them having any hard feelings? Yeah. Um, well, I think that the way you do it, because the Midwest way to do it is by not actually confronting them to their face. By just doing all of it yourself. Either doing it, number one, you do it all yourself. And if you're still not happy with that, then what you're going to do is you're just going to, after <laughs> after the trip, this is big, you're just going to send them a Venmo request for whatever money you think is worth it. You know, <laughs> that is the most passive yeah. way possible. Also call in a podcast to ask how to uh, tell them to do it. Um, you know, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of directness going on in the Midwest. It's a lot of uh, roundabout kind of ways. 
lot of uh, passive money gathering going on at the end. Have you always like stocked the boat in the past though, and stocked the gas, filled the gas? Well, I've only had it like a few months now, so it's only been out. He sees this as being a potential future issue, and he's got a nip it in the butt, as I think what's happening here. Okay, okay. Um, another thing you could do too. Yeah, turn that up. Yeah. Okay. Here's a good move too. To make you look even better, just say that you had something come up and you're running late. And so if someone could swing by the liquor store or swing by the grocery store to pick up some food and beers because you weren't able to get there, you were trying to, you did everything you could to get there, but you just can't this time. And then they then put it on them and it looks like you're doing this valiant effort to to go above and beyond for them, but they end up just buying it anyway. So yeah, make them that. think of their saving the day. Like, man, if you picked up two cases, specifically two cases, that would save the day. Then they would probably feel good about saving the day, right? Yeah, but the problem might be is they sound pretty cheap is after you guys go out in the water and you get home, they may send you a Venmo <laughs> request. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then they just would never come back out again. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you think of that, Charlie? You I mean, know? I'm th- I'm thinking that that is uh, pretty good. I'm also trying to think what kind of person am I, you know, because a lot of people uh, just space out and don't even think, uh, don't even think about it. It's like almost like some people go in with the ph- philosophy of, oh, you invited me. This is your thing, you know, and then when I invite you to come over my house, I stock the beer. I stock. I got beer in the fridge. Yeah. You know, I'm paying for the heat. So I actually got into myself a a little bit of a situation once um, where I had some friends that wanted me to come out on a boat and I, they always got booze. Right. And so I actually was running late. And so it became the conundrum. They were already waiting for me at the dock. Oh, and I still Mm. had yet to go to the liquor store. So I had to make the tough decision between, and and I, and I it, you know what it wasn't a tough decision i learned a lesson that day i thought you know what to be courtesy of them i'll bum a few beers off of them they're good friends you know they don't seem like it's going to be an issue they think they'd rather spend more time on the water than wait for me to go to the liquor store and boy oh boy was i wrong <laughs> And in true Midwest fashion, they didn't say anything at the time. And, of course, I bummed a few beers. But every now and again, there's a snarky comment about, oh, well, Miles doesn't bring any beer when he comes over, even though I do every other single time. I always make sure when we're at a bar to pick up certain tabs or beers or whatever. I'm trying to do my penance for that one bad deed that I did. But I, I learned a tough lesson that day that you always go for the beer. People don't care about their time. They care mm. about how much beer you bring. Mm-hmm. And people never remember the time you did bring beer, but they will never forget the time you didn't. Put that on like a sign to put above the bar somewhere. Seriously. Seriously. Well, so I'm still... I'll I'm put, st- it on the, put it on the, on the boat trailer, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So is there... That'd be the name of the boat. Is there an acceptable amount of time where you can leave your buddy at the ramp? Where if it's past, if he's an hour late, do you just leave him behind? Well, is he getting beer or not getting beer is the question. Yeah, you know? how bad do you want him on that boat? What's he adding? Mm. Okay, I, the other friend brought beer. So we got enough beer for two people, not three. Third guy, hour late. We don't need his beer. How long do you wait? I think what you do is you leave as he's so then when he shows up, then he has to wait for you guys to come pick him up because nothing feels lamer than standing on the end of a dock waiting for someone to pick you up. You just feel exposed out there. You feel like you just look like kind of a doofus. <laughs> You're a sitting duck. You know, it's like uh, showing up way too, way too early to a to a social event and you're kind of just sitting there, you know, which is you and the host and they're kind of wondering why you show up so early. But but you can't race back yeah. either because then he won't learn his lesson. You have to be teaching lessons along the way here. So let him sip for a minute. Here's real. Yeah. I like that. That's a good, that's a good, good, good idea. It's going like, to completely change my summer. Make yeah. it a whole lot better this advice. Yeah, and, and, and I think you got to start with the subtle, com- com- the subtle comments like my buddies did. 
because it actually I lie awake at night sometimes thinking about that that time I didn't bring the beer. Yeah, I've never seen you so concerned about what somebody else thought about you until yeah, this moment. It was right now. Uh, I lie awake and they still once in a while whip that out on me and uh, so it, and it doesn't have to be super mean. It's just. Uh, you know, maybe you're at the bar and you're like, oh, no worry, I'll get it. You know, just like we're on the boat. <laughs> now, there is stuff like that. <laughs> there are certain situations, too, where like some people just don't have the money. And in that case, you can really you can earn your keep on a boat. I think you can be the anchor guy. Yeah. <laughs> if, if let's say you're in a situation mm. where you're real broke, yeah. which is fine. Been there. We've all been there. But you got to put yourself to work once you get on that boat. Even if you don't have to man any ropes, just just have a rope in your hand. Yep. You know, I don't know what you need the rope for. Show up with a rope, yep. at least. Have a rope. Be ready. Um, be the first person to always stand up, you know? Yeah. If you can just be yeah. vertical instead of horizontal on a boat, it always plays better. Looks like you're really active trying to help out. Yep. Look at the horizon. See if there's anything floating that might ding the prop. Yep. Look for sandbars. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, check the buoys when you leave. Make sure you're not you don't have buoys dangling outside the boat. You know, just be helpful. Also, yeah. Okay. Know how to tie yeah. a, a, a proper boat knot because you can be the guy to hop out and to tie the boat up. Yeah. You know, if you're that helpful of a guy, everyone's yeah. going to forget the fact that you took 12 of their beers. Also, make sure that you're waving at every other boat go by to, sh to signal that yes. you guys are a friendly boat. People really enjoy not having to be the of one course. waving all the time. Yep. You know? Be the one to initiate. Yeah. So yeah. if you are yeah. in a tough financial situation and you can't always bring a 30 rack of beer to the boat, at least earn your keep is what I think we're saying here. Charlie. Yeah. If you do just those few things, it'll go a long way. You'll ride for free. You'll drink for free. And you'll get invited back on that boat. Man, I need, I need myself a friend with a boat so I don't have to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> just do that, actually. Yeah. It's even better. Yeah. He's, he's putting up for sale sign on his boat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that's cool, man. You got a, you got a fun summer ahead of you. You really do. You're gonna be the oh, most yeah. popular. You're gonna. You guys, you guys. <laughs> this is the most midwest oh, so, thing. Uh, Miles, you got a boat? You guys have talked about it, right? Uh, see, I am what you would call a smart person, and I don't have a boat. I just have friends with boats. Uh, FWB, love it. Uh, no, my love uh, it. I go to my parents' cabin a lot. They got a boat, and I ain't buying a new one if that one's still working, you know? so Forget friends with benefits. Exactly. Good idea. We just want parents friends with, with boats. boats. <laughs> parents with boats. <laughs> PWB. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'll own a boat well, if at you're some down point. this way, down Chicago, we'll have to take you out get, get, get some bass. Yeah, we'll make sure to bring a lot of beer. Yeah. Love it. What's uh, your what's your stance on uh, having like a dolly or a two wheel cart on the boat? Because that's what we're gonna need to do with all the beer we're bringing. Mm. Is it you know like some people are like shoes off in the boat kind of rule? Do you have a rule against bringing uh, a, a dolly yeah, yeah. or a two wheel cart full of beer on the boat? Well, I'm not really that good at catching fish yet, so I just use the live well as cooler because I'm not putting any fish in the live well, so it's just it's the coolest beer. I love that. You're not even fishing out there, are you? <laughs> It's, I guess that's the that's benefit. That's not why we're going. His buddy shows up and he's like, guys, I forgot the rods. We're like, we don't care about that. Did you bring the beer? <laughs> 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 All right, man. Well, I hope that that helps a little bit. Um, we gave you a few different angles to go at and uh, sounds like you're going to have a fun summer. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, right. appreciate you calling. Have a good one. Uh, still thinking about that. I can tell. It's really gnawing at you. It's just because I also know other people that do that, and I don't want to be in the same category. And, uh, you know, it's one of those lessons you hopefully only have to learn once. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, like, geez, have I ever done that? And if you have to be the guy thinking, geez, have I ever done that? You're probably the guy that's done that. I know I've shown up late. For sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I've never shown up on time. And, um, yeah, I probably forgot or brought insufficient booze. It's like, like uh, you know, on the super, super hero or super villain origin story. 
That's my you betcha guy origin story. Of, <laughs> that's the moment I decided I was, you know, going to be the bush light guy. Gonna you know, be the guy with endless bush light <laughs> yeah. supply. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it had a traumatic experience for you. You know who I um who's kind of annoying is a guy who just brings a six pack, and it's like some of the thickest beer yeah. that only that guy wants to drink. You know. Yeah, it's like if you're going to bring beer that only you want to drink, that's fine. But you got to bring at least something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. and Or at least bring 12 and pretend that someone else is going to drink those. Yeah. You know? I would love to do an experiment one time. Just show up with like the thickest IPA somewhere and just... You do a thing where you just start throwing them to people <laughs> because they're not going to, th- you can't throw it back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like once you catch a beer, you can't just be like, I don't want this and whip it back at them. So then they have to at least drink some of it and then just scan and see everyone's faces. Of, oh God, I bet he hates that. I bet he's gagging on the inside. But with an IPA, like if you are going for the full commitment of taking a sip, you at least know as bad as it tastes, it's got at least that much alcohol yeah it's got more alcohol yeah you're like well at least i'm gonna get messed up i'm gonna wake up with the heat sweats at 3 a.m you know you guys ever get that you know you kidding me i get the meat sweats in the middle of the day i yeah it's just how it goes charlie gets heat sweats i get meat i get heat sweats dude i can't i can't drink anymore i can't do it like i drink a, a certain amount of uh beers at night 3 a.m. Just waking up. I'm like a freaking well, radiating hey. dude. Yeah. You're old. I think you just stated that you're old. I'm yeah, I'm old. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to catch you. Oh, so man. all right. Should we take another caller? Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to the bellied up podcast. Who do we got on the line? Uh, this is Brinson. What's up, my guy? How you doing? Brinson, you said? Yeah, it's like Branson, Missouri, but with an I instead of an A. Brinson. Brin- Branson. Branson. Yeah, it was I. Yeah. It's like Cranston. Afraid of Felcher? You kind know of, it? but there's no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so like Cranston, you know? What's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. I'm just a uh, a former Hoosier turned Florida man. Ooh. And uh, we were expecting our first kid in November. My wife and I, and uh, congrats on the sex. How do I, uh, congrats on the sex. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you did Very it. Very good. Yeah, at least once confirmed. Confirmed um, one time sex haver. Good for you. Yep, almost as good as Ryan the t-shirt guy. He's got me beat. <laughs> well, uh, Tyler, Tyler's got eight kids, but um, well, what's on your mind? Why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's going on. Uh, so yeah, I, I ended up uh, marrying my wife, but she lived in Florida her whole life, and uh, she fell for a nice, uh, fuzzy-haired white guy, and somehow, but you know, we're here and uh, living in Florida. But uh, there's certain things that I just can't teach, like you know, the Midwest goodbye. How do I teach this to my kids, like, without them getting lost in you know the whole Florida man antics, like wrestling alligators? Ah. Uh, well, what? A, well, here's my first question. Let's just flip it around here. How do Floridians, how do people from Florida say goodbye? Floridian, in yeah. case you were wondering. I think they just get drunk and pass out on the couch, if I'm being honest. <laughs> they get drunk and pass out on the couch? Yeah, well, I mean, I that, guess that, that, that happens that's very, too. I mean, that's I also very similar to the Midwest goodbye, I guess. So what, What? Um, let's see here. Well, I think we, let's not... I mean, the Midwest goodbye, that's like some advanced stuff. And you're talking about having a kid. I mean, we got to talk about just, we got to start with the foundations of the Midwest. You don't got to jump right into the Midwest goodbye. It's a baby for, right. For cripes sake. Baby's got to learn how to say Ope first. Yeah. That should be the first thing. uh, No mama. People be bumping into each other enough. So they'll get it right out of the gate. Yeah. No mom, no dad is the first word. It should be Ope. Should be your baby's first word. I also think another way that you can instill the Midwest lifestyle in your baby is maybe just taking a half a ranch packet and just pouring it in the bottle, mixing that up, and uh, you know, we're ranch. Fl- about Golden Valley, or uh, it what kind of brand are we talking? It about? doesn't matter. You just—it's a baby. Their taste buds are still figuring it out. They're not going to know the good stuff from the bad stuff. So, whatever's cheapest, I think, is probably best. Yeah. 
Just mix it right in there. That's a lot coming from the long time of work. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just, it's kind of like uh, fruits and vegetables. You just got to get them in. You didn't just, doesn't matter if you mix broccoli in with your brownies or anything like that. You just get the greens in, get the ranch in the baby bottle. And only go for walks exactly. in the rain just so they're used to going home when you guys go home. Uh, it rains plenty here, so I think they'll get plenty used to that. Okay, well, that's good. What part of Florida are you in, did you say? Uh, St. Pete, like the Tampa area. Oh, yeah. See, the thing about uh, Florida is it's basically uh, Midwest South. A lot of people from the Midwest, a lot of snowbirds find their way down there. So you're going to want to find yourself uh, your various bars. Your Hoosier bar, you said you're a Hoosier. You want to find that bar. You want them to become a Packers fan if they, uh, you know, have any real interest in uh, seeing their football team succeed. I don't want to hear any jokes about the Packers uh, team this year. But, you know, they, there are a lot of Midwest folks down there. Just start ingraining, uh, you know, meeting them. Ha- get get Surround him with the Midwest people. Well, you did a comedy show in Florida, didn't yeah, you, Charlie? I did. Naples. I did it in Naples and uh, Orlando and Tampa in each place and Miami. Ton of Midwest people in all those places. So, yeah, you got to get a friend group around this kid that also is maybe from the Midwest is, I think, what would be a good move to do. So I got a good answer for that. Me and the hot buddies, we play video games, but uh, one of them's got a lake house up on Lake Michigan that we went to last 4th of July. So I plan on keeping that tradition going. With That's them. a great start. So. I also think if you can find a Midwest-only daycare, that would also be great. Ooh. You know? They don't have those, but they should start they one. They should start them, Maybe yeah. you should start that. Yeah, you have to have some sort of one of your parents has to be from the Midwest or otherwise you can't go to that daycare. And lunchtime is only brats. (laughs) What kind of brats, though? Are we talking like uh, Italian sausages? Are we talking like a Chicago style brat? It makes a huge difference. Hey, hey, he's from the Midwest. Yeah, (laughs) he's not lying. He's asking the right questions. He is a straight shooter. I can tell you that yeah, much. He is. You if know, like, if we want to just get portillos and settle with like that, it's okay. But it's not as good as like a good butcher getting you a good. Oh product. man! Wow, this guy knows his stuff. You know. I, you know what? I think you're yeah. over. I think you're overthinking it. I think that from what we've heard from him today, this kid is. I don't think you have to worry about instilling anything. I think it's going to be. He's going to learn some Midwest values from you. Okay, that'll be good. The problem is the wife is New York Italian, and so we got to try to like win over that. It's a strong culture. Oh man, yeah, yeah. And New York Italians—they're a little bit more uh, demanding than well, Midwest people. But here's the thing: is you're gonna be the shoulder to cry on growing up, right? Your wife—I I don't want to put anyone in a box, but probably gonna get a little bit more uh short-tempered or heated than you would in a scenario Mm -hmm. and the kid's gonna be like wow dad mom just went off the rails about uh about a charcuterie board and sandwich meats i don't know what happened you know it was it's just gabagool and then he's gonna come to you and go Dad, what's going on? And then that's when you just instill the Midwest niceness in them. Yeah, your first words are going to have to be, oh, sorry, because your wife's probably going to get to him first with the first words, which is going to be F you. So yep. after he says that to his teacher, he's going to have to come in hot with an oh, sorry after that. You're The you're, rest of your life, you're going to be just repairing things, just repairing the damage that happens. Yeah, the Midwestness is just the Band-Aids for the... Uh, New York Italian. Yeah, they do have good food, though. I will admit. And the Catholics make just as many kids. It's kind of impressive. Are you both Catholic? Uh, actually, no. I grew up Pentecostal. She grew up Catholic, so it's uh, all over the place. Oh wow, Pentecostal! I don't uh, even I don't, know what the I've hell never, that is. I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of it. I just don't know what it is. I've never heard of that in my life. Like the Pentecost. Uh, it's closer to like charismatic type of thing. Charismatic? Oh, is it like? I've never heard of that either. What? Like, uh, like what? What is the? Do you guys have a pastor? Do you have a priest? How does that work? 
He's not a pastor. A priest. Yeah, my dad's actually a pastor. So, oh, oh, your dad's yeah. a pastor. So is it Christian though? Oh, oh yeah, it's Christian. Oh. Yeah, Pentecost. Your mom's yeah. gonna be so upset when she listens. Well, no, I know. <sighs> uh, I don't think you did. I don't think you did. Me and your mom are gonna have a talk after this. That's fine. Yeah, I, honestly. So, anyways, uh, yeah, Pentecostal. I uh, is that like where you get like really into it, and you like, you know, you kind of like it's a lot of rah rah stuff. Yeah, how much eyes closed, hands in the air, singing goes on at the service? Good question. Oh, uh, we're talking carrying a seventy-five inch TV with like pepper spray in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just it's just <laughs> the anguish. Great. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great visual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. You gotta do the hands and the and eyes. Can I have <laughs> that song was after me. I don't even know that song. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to have a talk with your mom. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> was early 2000s. I was only like a baby during that time. Oh boy. Yeah. Jeez. Now Young you're having mom. a baby. You, I know, it's crazy. You were born in the early 2000s, and you were having a kid before Dang. Charlie and I, I did. Okay? I don't want that late 2000s slander, okay? Okay. 98, we're, we're still 90, baby. So you're 24. We're not that young. You're 24? Oh, yep. And 25 here soon. Wow. And you got one yeah. in the in the, the oven, oven already. Bun in the oven. Good for you. Is she 25? 24? Uh, she's uh, 24 as well. Wow, where'd so you guys we meet? Met in college. You met in college. Uh, in college, uh, went to a Christian college. Both of us had scholarship, and then uh, graduated and didn't talk to each other for a few years, and then got back together and got married when COVID was nice and great. Did you guys go to the uh, go to the scholarship reunion? Is that where you met? Why'd you have to slip that in there? You're making both me and Miles feel bad about ourselves. Yeah, what the hell? Because we couldn't afford private college without it. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't see, think I anyone see. can. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. What's uh, w- tell us how you guys got reunited? Was it you slid into our DMs uh, or what? Uh, a little bit, but the other way around though. I was uh, working for a church up in Jacksonville, and uh, she was a uh, English teacher to little kids in Honduras. So she speaks Spanish and English, and. Uh, um, when COVID hit and they had to go back to, she had to go back to the U S uh, she uh, saw that I was back in Florida. Cause I had to move back up to Indiana with family after college. Cause you know, it's hard finding a job, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, she DM'd me on Instagram to uh, see what was going on. And uh, wow. I was like, Oh, it's that hot girl from my English class in college. Let's uh, go. Okay. Well, you guys are thoroughly making me and Charlie feel like pieces of shit yeah. because you're only 24 and it sounds like she's curing cancer and you're doing God's work out there. And it's like this whole thing. And me and Charlie are just two 30 plus year old guys belly up to at a, a bar, bar on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes you feel better. Uh, I was working at Chipotle for most of those years, so okay. Well, uh, still better than still better than working concrete. What I was doing before this, so you're doing a heck of a job, is what we're trying to say. Yeah, we're not worried about your kid at all. Your kid's got he's in, your kid's going to be in good hands. Yeah, and you had sex. Well, thank you. Good for you. Um, last question I have for you. How are you going to raise the kid? Catholic or uh, Pentecostal. Pentagon? Pentagon or, or uh, it's Catholic? It's Pentecostal. His dad is the Pentagonal. Is, is this kid going to have five sides or is he going to be Catholic? So we actually uh, ended up, because that's something you got to figure out when you're married. I mean, Charlie's got plenty of experience with arguments. So, um, you know, you got you to gotta find a church that you like together. So we're at a non-denominational church. That we ended up liking. But, uh, uh, why don't you meet yeah. me in the middle is what you guys said. Pretty much, because uh, at the end of the day, most Christians believe 99% of the same stuff, just the 1% we all get caught up in. You know yeah. what? God. Kids got it together. I can't wait. I'm, I, I want to. You're going to be a good dad. Yeah. And you're asking the right question. That's cool. So I already got a 10 by 10 tent and cooler for the beach as well. So nah. the kid's going to be set. Yeah, yeah. You are set, man. Just remember, Ope, sorry, before mom and dad, Ope, sorry. Well, uh, yeah, I think that'll be good. 
Sounds good, man. Wow. Well, congratulations yeah. again, and uh, well, you're going to you. be a good dad, and thanks for calling into the pod. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. Tell your wife we says hi, and your dad. I'll tell your folks we says hi, too. Okay, will do. <laughs> I'm sure my dad will appreciate it. All right, bye. Awesome. See you now. What a good, good guy. Good dude. Asking all the right questions. You know, I think that kid's going to grow up to be... Uh, just fine. What if his wife is just the sweetest lady? I made her seem out to be Tony Soprano. You well, know? you know, he did. He said Italian, New York, you know, yeah. Tony Soprano, New Jersey, you know, but same church, different pew, same church, different pew. Hey, and Pentagono, you know, <laughs> I don't know. What, what, so what actually is it? Pentecostal. Oh, I don't, I've never heard of that. I love this visual though. <laughs> it's all good. Holding the 75 inch TV <laughs> above your head and pepper spray in the eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Good, good guy. Let's yeah. take another one. Charlie. Miles. It's May. It is May. You know what goes great in May? Tippy you know what, cow? Yeah, you know what May's good for? Booze. Flowers. Flowers. And tippy cow. And tippy cow. You know, if you're doing your garden, starting to get it rolling in May. Yeah. I've never done a garden, but I imagine if you You've were to do it. never done a garden? <laughs> well, one day you're going to find a garden that you really love. And you two are going to decide to spend the rest of your lives together. And then on that day, you will do a garden. Well, I think that that has happened. So maybe I'm a gardener. But regardless, you know what makes the garden grow? What's that, Miles? Booze. Booze. Because you plant that. the stuff, and then you just got to wait. And so uh, no better way to waste time gardening than with Tippy Cow. Hey. Nothing goes better on a hot, cool day than a nice ice-cold glass of Tippy Cow. So, Charlie, cheers to your, cheers to your garden. Cheers to your garden success i know you're gonna need it thank you and uh tip it on back tip it on back with tippy cow heck yeah Hmm. delicious real milk from wisconsin yep wisconsin cows guys if you're interested in charlie and i coming to your local small town bar to belly on up and do our podcast we have a submission form now so you can submit your bar and and maybe we just might show up so if you go to our instagram page at bellied up pod in the by in the description the profile the link in bio click on the link submit your bar welcome to the bellied up podcast who we got on the line my name's Hart. What? Hello? Hello? Hey. What's your name? Hello? My name's Hunter. <laughs> Hunter? Hunter? Hunter. What? Are you are you talking to us in a bathroom? Oh, What's going on? Oh, there you go. You were on speakerphone, weren't you? Oh, okay. It sounded like you were... Yeah, uh, uh, no, I was on the headset. You were what? I was on the Bluetooth earbud. Oh, the Bluetooth. Yeah. Yeah. We got to switch over to the other one, but you're sounding. No, they, they, they don't work all that, though. Yeah. You're coming in good now, though. So, uh, Hunter, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. What's going on? Well, I got a little debacle here. <laughs> so, I just turned 21 a few weeks ago. Congratulations. And Happy late I, birthday. I got sent out of town on a. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I got sent out here on a work trip. I'm working right now, and after all our shifts, I got to somehow keep up with the other coworkers at the bar. And I'm trying to figure out how to approach this. I'm trying to learn some bar etiquette. Yep. So I, I don't. What, what do I do? Do I just, do well, I just start to hammer them down? <laughs> Let's start with what you're having trouble with right now. What's kind of your biggest uh, hang up? What's the biggest thing in your mind that's been tough for you to figure out? I, I can't keep up with them. The other guys on the site, they're cranking down 12 beers or so after a hard day's work. Well, I'm just I'm just over here drinking like one or two and I'm gone. <laughs> well, well, so I... So I think the question you're looking to ask is how do you up your tolerance now that you started drinking? And the the answer is yeah. you just keep drinking is really how you do that. Yeah. Even though I got work in the morning? 
Well, no, even at work if you need to. I mean, you got to bump your numbers up. Even at work? Yeah, I think that's what's going to have to happen. Well, that advice could Well, what do you recommend? Drink? (laughs) I'm I'm kidding. Do not drink on the job. (laughs) I forget he's really young. He might. (laughs) Here's what you got to remember, though. Here's what you got to remember. I should put this away? (laughs) Yeah, put it away. Uh, Actually, wait. It's three o'clock. Yeah, you're It's five o'clock on the East Coast. Or somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. But um, what you do want to remember is you don't want to you don't want to catch them too quick because you got to think about the financial implications of that. Okay. You can't consistently go to the bar and buy twelve beers and have that be a lasting uh, thing. So think about your wallet, also your liver, but most. Well, it's, it's company paid for. Oh. Yeah. Well, then get your liver. Well, so here I want to. I'm going to frame it in in something so you can then understand your coworkers more. Okay, so I want yeah. you to close your eyes and put yourself in your coworkers' shoes. What do you guys do for a living? What's your guys' job? I'm a finished carpenter. Okay. Okay. He's a yeah. So. He's I'm just going to go out on a limb and say maybe some of these guys have been doing this for 10 years, 15, 20 years. And I, I hate to break it to you, but life is going to beat you down. And it sounds like your coworkers have been beaten down a little bit, gone through the ringer. I'm from Fargo. <laughs> we probably would say we they've been through the wood chipper. Okay, and been through the wood chipper. Yeah, Yeah. and when you've been through the old wood chipper, you don't have many options other than to, you know, take the edge off of the end of the day by having a couple ten to twelve beers, and makes you feel better about how life's beating you down. So you're saying they got to put a lot more time. Well, they're just more seasoned than you are because. They go, well, you're like, I got to work in the morning. And they go, I got to have 10 to 12 beers tonight because I got to work in the morning. (laughs) And you're like, I can only have one to two beers because I got to work in the morning. And at some point along the way, you're going to flip flop and be just like them. At some point, you're working to drink. At other point, you're drinking to work. (laughs) But the. uh, (laughs) I mean, I mean, here's I mean. Not wrong, Charles. So is it just the number of bars or are you, are you confused by some of the bar etiquette? It sounds like you're not very familiar with a bar. And you, the first bar you might have gone into is when you turned 21. Is that the case? Uh, legally, yeah. OK, so you've been in bars uh, before. Today. What about the etiquette are bars- you confused about? Like, how do I call a bartender? Like, is there is there a way, you know, like, hey, I need a refill? Like, uh, okay. do, do I do the ice? Like, how, how do I not seem rude? So, yeah, so you do have I just, in- you know, put, put my cup up? Like, well, uh, there's several ways to call a bartender. I don't want to offend a bartender. No, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Go ahead, Charlie. How do you call a bartender over to get you a drink okay you want to uh, make quick eye contact give a smile and say whenever you have a moment that would be good yeah when if you if you pair a visual move Mm -hmm. with a very polite audio uh words move it's a very good way to do it charlie yeah what you don't want to do is get up there and start tapping your card like an asshole yeah and uh oh yeah, that's that's what you don't want to do because that's a surefire way to get ignored in a busy bar. Um, and another good way to sure. do it is if you know you're going to be there for a few hours and you order one beer, just slap a 20 on the table when you pay for it. And there may be bartenders that go, well, I can't be bought like that. Yes, they can. Oh, yeah. And if you give them a big tip up front. Oh, they always can? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they're, they're, I mean. They'll remember you. And it's like if if your boss tells you you're going to like, hey, do you want a two dollar an hour raise? Are you going to say no to that or are you going to be like, yeah, same thing. So you're going to want to drop a 20 down first because you're going to, you know, it's basically you're not some people view it as, oh, you're over tipping. But in reality, you're buying the convenience of the bartender liking you 
and giving you priority over other people in the bar. But you don't have to do it in a douchey way. You can do it in just like a casual throw a 20 down, walk away. Very subtle. Fold it like you're putting money in the basket at church. You know, the right hand should not know what the left hand is doing. That's in the Bible somewhere. Oh, okay. Or did I read that? I think I'm getting it now. What's that? Yeah, you see that? You see how that's done? I think I've seen that. I, I, I think I've seen it on a bathroom wall. But there you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So those are just a couple tips. Um, but is there anything else about the dynamic that confuses you inside a bar? No, I think I'm getting it a little bit. Every single day they've been going to the bar. I've been joining them, so I've been slowly learning. But I feel like I need a little extra. Well, I mean, honestly, if we had the money, money runs the world. So if you buy your coworkers drinks, if you uh, give good tips to the bartender, your coworkers are going to like you. The bartenders are going to like you. And uh, it may seem like you're wasting money on that. But all but having coworkers that like you goes a long way. Yeah. And you're also wasting a lot of money off. on it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just are you pour going, all of my money into it? Are you going to the bar every single day after work? Yeah. Oh my God, that's not. Is that sustainable? He's Miles? 21 years old. It's absolutely sustainable for a 21 year old to be able to go to the bar every night. Uh, I sp- well, I'm t- well, you see, I'm working out of town. They got me living in a hotel. <laughs> so what's there to do besides work 14 hours and then go to the bar? Okay. Exactly. It I mean, sounds like you're actually living the dream. It's, I, you know what? I'm just getting all uh, yeah. upset because if I have a certain number of beers at my age, I, I wake up with the heat sweats, you know? Well, that's because you haven't been beaten down like his coworkers have. <laughs> <coughs> I've been. You gotta, you gotta grab a hammer, Charlie. I guess so. I get lose the microphone, pick up a hammer. I guess that's it. Yeah, you'll be drinking every day. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow it's up. It's time yeah, to grow up. Is, you know is. what? That's true. You know what, Charlie? These hands yeah, are too is, soft. I'm on his side. It is time for <laughs> time you to, to grow, grow up. <laughs> I'm so sick of you acting like a kid. <laughs> Me and this 21 year old yeah. kid are <laughs> sick of you <laughs> acting like a child. <laughs> Uh, you know, why, why even bother? <laughs> That's what all of his coworkers say. They say that yep, every time they exactly. walk into the bar, they they get to the, the threshold, the door of the bar, and they go, "I should go home because I got to work in the morning." And then they go, "Why even bother? <laughs> I'll just have a couple and go home." Twelve beers later, yeah, they're showing in the work, just overheating. He is- so my when I was in college, night, my uh, dad had some out of town trips for his construction crew. Yeah, and they they treated that like this, like they went to Disney World. Like if they were a kid and they went to Disney World, it's like this. Yeah, this is the adult version of going to Disney World is having an out of town job because everything's paid for and their families aren't with them, so they can just drink for like two weeks straight and not worry about a thing. Yeah, that's true. It is straight up. Like, you know, I, that's what I thought. I thought coming down here, it'd be, you know, we're serious. We're, you know, just working a ton, but no, everyone's just letting loose. Yeah, because they don't I have any other responsibilities. Yeah, I didn't understand the full context <laughs> of this situation, uh, apparently. Are you working right now? Yep. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, well, can you hear this? It sounds echoey. It sounds like you're an empty room putting the trim he's a, on. He's got a he's got a nail gun, I think. Is that a nail that gun? That was a nail gun. Dude, I got a trained ear for this shit. I didn't even hear what he was doing. I know, you gotta really <laughs> was be I paying talking attention. over it? Do yeah. it again. Wait, Charlie, pay attention. Yeah, it's a nail gun, all right. Are you paying attention? <laughs> All of a sudden, you just no. hear it in the background. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Watch where you're aiming that. It already happened. <laughs> There's no one else here. So it's just me. Nice. The, all, the rest of them are at the it. bar. <laughs> He's doing their job. They're already at the bar. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's great. Pretty much. Well, I think, Pretty I mean. Much. Yeah, do we I have- mean, honestly, you're in the wrong profession if you don't want to go to the bar and drink on road trips. You know, I think that you might just want to get a different job. What kind of hotel are you guys staying at? Uh, Hilton? No, not a Hilton. Oh, I was like, American Inn. Yeah. American Inn? Yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> American Inn in Wyndham, Minnesota. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it looks like we're staying at the Ritz Carlton. No. <laughs> it's the super I know, eight. I, I'm, I'm looking out the window. I can see it from here. I'm trying to read the sign. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. I mean, it. you definitely aren't uh, at a Hilton. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Well, but, go, yeah, we're, we're balling out. Good for you guys. That's you ordering great. like room but, uh, service too on the I company can, card or what? You think they have room service and an American? No, 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 not that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But they do have a bar at the hotel. Oh, nice. Is that where you're... It, um, you're... Getting... Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. After you, oh, I, I insist. I double bar action. I was, I was going to out to the bar to get a food and coming back and drinking beer at another bar. Yeah. Wow. It's great. Just take a few steps. I'm in my room. And then yeah. your night at the American. What you could also bar. do. Uh, so if you are really concerned about your work performance and being hung over and stuff like that, you just got to eventually perfect what my uncle has. And you just got to perfect the Irish goodbye. You got to learn how to do the, uh, oh. you got to do the fade, right? You know, you looks like you're going to the bathroom and right at the last second when no one's looking, you dip to the elevator and you go up to your room. I think you just got to learn that move. Just the, oh, you don't get you know, me. I, I yeah. got a little different version. What's that? What is What's it? That? Well, I, I got a little different version of the Irish. It's kind of like an Irish goodbye. I just stand up, wave to everybody, say goodbye, and run. Yeah, I mean, that works so it's, too. It's kind of like a formal goodbye, but instead of, you know, saying goodbye to everyone or, you know, it's just my way out of the Midwest goodbye. I don't like. Yeah, you just say, hey, guys, see ya. Make sure you get it. Yep, later, and then I run to the elevator. Yeah, just wow. try not even acknowledging you're leaving. Just go to the elevator, and I think you'll find. Okay. What what you could? Oh, this is great. So you do that, and then the next day they're like, "What happened to you? You 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 were the one there once, and then you're gone. Did you Irish? You go, man. I had I want to say twenty two beers last night, and I was just too drunk. I just ended up. <laughs> Yeah, and, and just just say like, yeah, I just woke up in all my clothes. You know, I don't even know what happened. So, wild night though, right, guys? Even though you had two beers, they're not going to know. That's true. Uh, just exaggerate. They'll give you a lot like more cred. It. I like. It. So there we go. I all like. Right. I like where this is going. All right. Well, you got to get back to work. Well, I got dude. a. Uh, <laughs> I got a buy sell trade. Oh, good. Throw yeah, it in there. What do you got? Yeah. He's got a live extra Nail gun. trim. Nail yeah. gun. <laughs> Oh, let me get a few. Bye. What the fuck? Oh, I hung up. He just, he did the goodbye. Yeah. Did you hear the... What? what? There's no way. Yeah, so he just did his version of the Irish goodbye there. That I, I, I'm gonna, I, if he's listening to this now, I got some major criticisms for it. <laughs> It leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. <laughs> I honestly, I like the move. I, I, you, the energy's you, great. Energy's great. But the feeling that I now have about him is a little less to be desired. So I think he just needs to go with the regular Irish goodbye. Um, did you hear? If we rewound the tape and listen again, he goes, "Hey, like, what do you think his, uh, his." What do you think he was shooting at that point? You know, I hope it wasn't the actual trim. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But he's just shooting it into a two by four. So he's a framer and he's a carpenter. Probably just a stud somewhere. But we just got hung up on. That was the first time we got hung up on. (laughs) That I'm 21 year old kid. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it. That way, is that really the first time we've been hung up on? Yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. Now I'm, I'm, episodes, I'm, what episode would this be, Jared, or close to? Like around 50. 50 there. some episodes yeah. it took Jeez. us to get hung up on. By we some did it. by some kid who doesn't even know how to drink yet. Yeah. He literally, it was some lightweight kid hung yeah. up on us. Yeah. He just got sick of talking to us. Yeah, he did. That, I mean, that has happened. We haven't been hung up on yet, though. Um, I mean, he did give us a demonstration of his move. I'm 50-50 on it, I think. I liked it initially, but now that you, you know, bring these other things to light, I'm starting to rethink it. Yeah. You know? I'll just need some time with this one. I've got abandonment issues. Yeah. My dog ran away once. Feel that. All right. 
Well, is that it, Jared? That's all of them. What a way to end the episode. (laughs) (laughs) God. Yeah. What the hell? Um, Let's call him back. (laughs) Also, let's find out where he works. Let's call his boss so he's drinking on the job. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Miles, another great episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. It really was, Charlie. Yeah. Um, It was nice to do it with you. Yeah. 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 It was good. Well, see you guys. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.